In this video, we're going to talk about uh, telencephalon, mainly the uh, cerebral hemispheres. When we look at the uh, hemispheres, we see some elevations and the grooves between them. These tortuous elevations are called gyrus, or they, uh, gyri is the plural form of the gyrus. Between the gyri, there are many sulcus. They are called sulcus, or the they, plural is the sulci, or you can use the groove. And there are also deep grooves, which are called fissures. This is the longitudinal, superior longitudinal fissure, in which there is the false cerebra, which separates the uh, cerebral hemispheres partially. This false cerebra is formed by the meningeal layer of the uh, dramator surrounding the brain. And there is another fissure right here. Look at this one, which this is called a transverse fissure, transverse fissure, which separates occipital lobe from the cerebellum. Okay, there are several uh, sulcus that we can name, but two of them has um, significance in terms of defining certain structures. One of them is the, look at this one, this is the lateral sulcus, or the sylvius, sylvian sulcus, this one, has an anterior ramus, ascending ramus and the posterior ramus. Another sulcus is this one here. This is the central sulcus or the sulcus of Rolando. Now, sulcus of Rolando separates frontal lobe anteriorly from the parietal lobe posteriorly. So, we have a, a well-formed sulcus that separates frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. That is what? That is the central sulcus. Down here, this is the temporal lobe. Here is the, a little bit, this is the, here is the, um, lateral sulcus, which separates temporal lobe anteriorly from the frontal lobe, posteriorly from the parietal lobe. On the external surface, there is no marked uh, sulcus or something else that separates occipital lobe, here is the occipital lobe, from the parietal lobe or occipital lobe from the temporal lobe. But on the medial surface of the hemispheres, there is a sulcus called parieto occipital sulcus, which separates um, parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. Now, let's look at this one. It is again central sulcus. Anterior to the central sulcus, this gyrus is called precentral gyrus. Precentral gyrus is the primary motor area. Broadman's area 4. Anterior to it, there is a sulcus. This is called precentral sulcus. Now, let's Note that this 
precentral gyrus belongs to the frontal lobe. Let's see other gyri and sulci of the frontal lobe. This is the superior frontal gyrus. This is the middle frontal gyrus. This is the inferior frontal gyrus. Now, here is the lateral sulcus, which has anterior ramus, ascending ramus, and the posterior ramus. Posterior ramus is longer than the anterior and the ascending ramus. The anterior and ascending rami of the lateral sulcus divides inferior frontal gyrus into three parts. Here is the orbit, the pars orbitalis, this one. Here is the pars triangularis. Here is the pars opercularis. The pars uh, triangularis and opercularis make up the procus area. Brodmann's area 44. This Broca's area controls the expression phase of the speech. In other words, upper motor neurons inside the Broca's area control the muscles for phonation. Okay. Again, remember, this is the um, <clears throat> precentral gyrus or the primary motor area. Right in front of it, this area here is the premotor area, Brotman's area 6. Anterior to this one, this area is the frontal eye field area, Brotman's area 8. And then this area is here, the Brotman's area 9, 10, 11, and 45 form the frontal association cortex. Now let's move back to the postcentral gyrus. Yeah, look at this one. It is the sulcus of Rolando. Just behind it, this is the postcentral gyrus. Postcentral gyrus is the primary somatosomastetic area. This is the Totman's area 312. 312. And impulses regarding or related to the general somatic afferent, like pressure, hot, cold, temperature, uh, vibration, proprioception, they all uh, become. Uh, let the level of consciousness on this postcentral gyrus. Now, on the parietal lobe here, we have the superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule. Inferior parietal lobule consists of supramarginal gyrus and angular gyrus. Now, there is a way to find supramarginal gyrus and angular gyrus. To find supramarginal gyrus, you trace the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. You see, this gyrus capping the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus is the supramarginal gyrus. Similarly, to find the angular gyrus, we trace this one. This sulcus is the, I will describe this soon, but this is the superior temporal sulcus. 
you trace the superior temporal uh, sulcus this way. So this is the here. Look at this one is the angular gyrus, supramarginal gyrus, angular gyrus. Together make up the inferior parietal lobule. Now let's look at the temporal lobe. Here is the temporal lobe, superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and inferior temporal gyrus. The sulcus between the superior and middle temporal gyri is the superior temporal sulcus. The sulcus between the middle and inferior temporal gyri is the inferior temporal sulcus. Now, there are, there are uh, short horizontally uh, coursing gyri on the superior temporal gyrus. They are called uh, transverse uh, temporal gyri or the Hessels, gyri of Hessels. You don't see them here, but they should be running horizontally deep to the uh, this lateral sulcus. On this area, we have uh, we have cortical areas. Let's define some of them. Here is the here is the um, post central gyrus. It's at its lower part. Closer the lateral sulcus, this area is the primary castatory cortex. Primary castatory cortex. On the superior temporal gyrus, there is the primary uh, auditory cortex. Primary auditory cortex. Around the primary auditory cortex, there is the auditory association cortex that is also known as the known as the Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area uh, is responsible for the comprehension of the language. So through the primary through the primary auditory area we hear we hear and through the Wernicke's area, we understand what we hear. And between this Wernicke's area and the Broca's area, there is the and arcuate fibers which connect the Wernicke's area to the Broca's area. Wernicke's area is the Broca's area to and the two. And the primary auditory area is the uh, Broadman's area for the one and the for the two. Well, if you want me to describe the place for the primary auditory area, well, it is located, look at, here is the post-central gyrus. At the tip of the postcentral gyrus, here, just on the superior temporal gyrus, in this area, you have the primary auditory area. Around it, you have the Wernicke's area or the auditory association cortex. Anterior to here, this area, there is the primary olfactory cortex. Primary olfactory cortex. On the back, here, there is the occipital lobe. Very uh, posterior part of the occipital lobe, you have the 
primary visual area. Primary visual area, Coltman's area 17, and around the primary uh, visual area, there is the visual association area, Coltman's area 18, 19, and uh, 39. Okay, so remember I told that uh, here is the superior sagittal fissure. In it, you have this one here. This is the, let me take this model here and show you the uh, false cerebri. This is the false cerebri, which separates, you see, which uh, sits in the superior sagittal fissure and partially separates two hemispheres. So this foul cerebri anteriorly attaches to the crista galli and posteriorly it attaches to the internal uh, occipital protuberance. On the upper or the superior margin or the border of the false cerebri, you have the superior sagittal sinus. On its inferior free edge, you have the inferior sagittal sinus. Inferior sagittal sinus joins to vein of gallon and forms the straight sinus. Look at this is the straight sinus. Straight sinus, um, take this out, here you have the occipital sinus, so the occipital sinus, superior sagittal sinus, and here you have the straight sinus, meet in the confluence of Sinium, confluence of sinium. And then the generally, generally, the superior sagittal sinus continues with the right transverse sinus. Then this continues as the as the sigmoid sinus, which drains into the which drains into the chocular, chocular um, foramen, chocular foramen. Here is the cavernous sinus, right and left cavernous sinus. This is the superior petrosal sinus, which connects cavernous sinus to the transverse sinus. This one is the inferior petrosal sinus, which connects the cavernous sinus to the chocular foramen or the chocular foramen. 